Jennifer? Well, so I think um, like we're, there, there's a bunch of different um, layers to this course. So number one, uh, I don't know if Jennifer mentioned to you, uh, one of the biggest barriers with us right now at Niagara College is that there's some um, policies, I guess, within the college that prevent us from requiring a student to purchase an online resource for um, that's based for the purpose of evaluation. So I can't. Yeah, she made really notes about that. Yeah, so it's like the legislator. Or, yeah. So. Yeah, and so I think we're going to try to change that going forward if this resource is. Um, uh, if it works, but for now, I'm trying to figure out a way around it. And I think I have, I guess my biggest, oh, nice. my biggest, um, needs, I guess, to implement this course is like, where do I go from here? Um, you know, how do I roll this out for students? How do I support them? Like at the onset initially, and then ideas for the actual, um, getting around the evaluation piece, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. That's, that's, uh, that's good context. So thank you for letting me know that. In terms of getting around the evaluation piece, sometimes one way to do that is if whether or not it counts as course weight. So sometimes, and let me know if you think this is kind of a, a way around that, if you make them pass fail where the students are required to do them, so they're not actually technically part of the course grade, but you can't you know, pass the course without it. I don't know if legalistically that gets you through for that question, what do you think on that idea? Well, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. What I did propose to my dean is, um, because it's online, one of my assignments, which is weighted, is a discussion board posting type assignment where the students have to participate every week in discussion board discussion about cases, et cetera. Right. And so my plan was to um, most weeks to, uh, provide questions and case studies based on their, uh, it's called the DCE, is that the correct term? The DCE? Yeah, yeah uh, that's right. And then some, allowing some uh, questions not to be based on that, so that students who really can't afford right. or, or yeah. choose not to purchase it, they do have an alternative option. Um, but the questions would be more reflective based on their experiences. So I could look online to see, you know, on the DCE to see which students have participated, what their experiences have been like, allowing me some of that formative feedback, but the then they would be um, forced, I guess, quote unquote, they would be prompted to re reflect on or answer a number of questions each week about their experiences on the DCE. Yeah, that's a clever idea as a way to give them an alternative while still folding in some course weight to it so i think that's a clever way to do it um yeah the only other way i could see it is if similar to what your your ideas that you have where you're trying to essentially make it a prerequisite by giving students an alternative path just so right. they don't have to purchase it as part of the university policy right. um so w the form post seemed like the easiest way to do that in terms of a documentation paper, do you have students write up like, uh, would it be like, probably wouldn't be soap notes, but do you, in terms of that documentation paper, is that more evidence-based practice or tell me a little bit more about that? Uh, the documentation paper, I'm just gonna pull up my rubric. The documentation paper that I make them do is an end of term, uh, where is it? And it's, um, they are, um, asked to uh, essentially just do a focused health history and physical assessment um, on, on a patient that they're assigned. So previously I assigned them just a little blurb, like a little case study. Um, I was right. toying with the idea of basing it on, you know, giving them the option of doing it on a case scenario or giving them the option of doing it on, I don't know, like Tina Jones or whoever for um Yeah, that was my other thought. Yeah. Uh, um, similar to what you were already thinking, yeah. We have to do a DAR note, so they just subjective objective uh, assessment and then action response. So, okay, yeah, yeah, because obviously they could pull all of the S and the O from one of the assignments, and um, we have students do an S bar, which is 
pretty similar to what you described, although probably not exactly, in some of the folks exam assignments. So those could be, you know, pretty much one-to-one -one, um, alternatives as just another avenue if you do want students to participate a little bit more in the virtual platform. Okay, and you know what they they do in their clinical they um they they toy with all the different documentation they do soap notes they do jars they do oh, okay. um and gotcha. so, so you guys do yeah I can prompt them to you know practice that as well as a I mean it's 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 tools that they need to know uh, anyway. The last part is um there may not be I, I know in some courses they have like almost required preparation for a final exam. Um, if you have something like that, which you may not, you could basically use the comprehensive assignment as a one of the avenues that they could do just to demonstrate they're ready or as, as required practice. And then, you know, you could give students another alternative, whether that's just documenting that they did it on a partner or a family member or something like that. Um, that could be another authentic way to, you know, where they get additional practice and feedback so their final exam scores are better than they would have been otherwise. Than they would have been so and part of in my syllabus what i've done is i've um i mean from what i know about the the, the program anyway is i have as part of their required readings each week i've included a lot of the concept labs um sure. so the health three concept lab the doc documentation the respiratory the cv the abdominal and then the comprehensive assessment and so um, I mean, those are required readings. They're, I guarantee not every student will do them. Um, sure. But I'm sure a lot of them will. So uh, those are all ways that I'm trying to integrate it in. I guess it's just how do I get, how do I do this? <laughs> how do yeah, I? Yeah, no, it's, uh, uh, it's creative problem solving. And, and actually, yeah. I like a, a lot of your ideas that you've come up with so far in terms of ways to do that. Again, the only other way, which essentially is trying to make it like, as you mentioned, like a recommended reading in addition to it's integrated into some of the activities, even though students do have an alternative that doesn't require them to purchase the software. Right. Um, and then potentially as a prerequisite, whether you, for the final exam, have they can do a comprehensive assignment or even submit a video of them. It's just like, do they, pre like, it's just ensuring they do the intentional practice. That's right. how you potentially could frame it for the final exam. And, um, and you're just looking to make sure they're engaging in that, whether they submit a video of themselves doing it uh, on a partner or a family member, or they just do it in, in Tina. So, um, right. And I think going forward, if we can take this, um, I, I do a demonstration assignment in class when it's face-to-face, -face, and I think uh, a for preparation and B even to replace the face to face as we continue this online thing. I think that would be valuable. So um, yeah, I it's going to be a struggle this term to find sure. ways of evaluation piece, but I think we can make it work. The last idea, which probably again is prohibited, would be the extra credit angle. Whether if they do a certain number of assignments um, to allow them extra credit, but you may not have that flexibility. Yeah, I'm not allowed to do that. Okay, um, I would say all the ideas we come up with is probably with the constraints you're in. I mean, those are all solid ideas. I think all of them would be the best, but if you can't do all of them, um, the forum post question I think makes a lot of sense. And um, it's something that'd be relatively easier to implement and not come up with like a time consuming alternative on your end that you would have to then you know do a bunch of extra work for if that shouldn't be too bad. But then the documentation piece, again, like the focus exams are perfect for that, I think, um, as additional ways to practice for those. And I mean, it's like anything, my, my attitude towards a lot of these resources is these are adult learners. And I mean, 90% of the students buy the textbook, uh, I'm assuming right. will be for this. So, I mean, I can't force people to, right. to do that. So, um, but they're usually pretty keen. So I, I think it won't be a problem. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, great. In that case, then let's get into your course and just make sure, you know, that we have it set up uh, as you wanted, unless there are some other things you want to do, uh, go over before we did that. No, I guess, like I've done my syllabus. I don't even know if it would be helpful if I shared that with you guys as a means of sort of, um, like, um, so yeah, for I can make you the presenter. 
Yeah, let me yeah, like the first your screen. Oh, okay. Uh there should be a button that pops up that hits uh, share or show my screen. So this is my syllabus. And so I've included a little blurb here. Um, I don't know where I got this. I think I got it somewhere, something that Jennifer showed me. And yeah, I, probably the syllabus kit. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then what I've done is I've integrated the very first class. It's just an intro to the course, and it's going to be a review of like an orientation to the program. Um, right. So I guess that's my, how do I go about doing that since I'm still learning? I'm going to have to spend a lot of time toying with it, but if there's a standardized way that I can provide mm -hmm. that, uh, like an introduction and orientation to the program. Yeah. Um, uh, let me send you a couple of resources. Let me email them to you right now, just so uh, they're in your box and we can talk about them. Let me. One of them is going to be if you actually want to almost do a demonstration for them. We basically have a script; they'll make it as uh, painless as possible. So you don't have to prepare a whole lot for that. Let me pull up your email real quick, and then the other resource we we actually have a video orientation that you can use um that's probably if you don't have a lot of time to you know do any preparation i, I mean the video is good to go you just play the video it's about uh, a little shy of 15 minutes and i'll show you what that is in a second and what that includes um okay and then you can tell me what you think is probably the best plan at this point um I'm just going to call this uh, student introduction resources, and then let me get the. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me just get it real quick. All right, presentation. And are you having other faculty that are um, helping you teach the course? Are you pretty much running the show when it comes to just the shadow um, component? I'm primary faculty. There's another section of the course, a much smaller section. Uh, my colleague Vanessa LeVay is doing that. She was supposed to join us today, but she um, she had to go up north. Her father's in the hospital, so oh, I'm um, sorry to hear that. Yeah, not a good day today. But I'm gonna. I think what I'll do is I'll sort of get, get her up to speed and then maybe connect her with you guys if she has any questions further to that. Um, yeah, that sounds good. Um, but I'm in the course, so. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me. All right. Da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this. Uh, I thought I had it in one of my folders, but there's another place I can get it. All right. So let me download this and send it to you. And I'm also going to include. You probably already have this in your syllabus, but um, you like an option is you can just play it in class and then kind of debrief with students after watching it. Um, and we can talk about some of those uh, good uh, talking points. And so, um, attached is the script to introduce Shadow House to your students, or you can use the um, video orientation for students. We try to make it as painless as possible, which is why we did a video. Right. I think maybe what I would do, just even thinking about it, is, is I would, uh, how do I get back here, um, is I would post the video, make that as part of their required readings for the week, and then um, supplement that with a kind of a script and provide them on, with um, information, uh, like, I'm sure it's part of the email that I can just post directly on their online platform. Yeah, uh, yeah it is for sure. And like, um Oh, go ahead. I cut you off. They have a contact information or something for somebody to help them, like a student mm -hmm. support person or. Yeah, you're exactly correct. And um, let, let me show you those two resources and I'll talk about some of the other points I think that would be smart to bring up. Uh, if you check your email, it should be it should have just come through. And so if you want to download the attachment, I'll just briefly walk you through that. So this is the script if you wanted to start one of the assignments with Tina. 
and um, and then you can see the, I mean, we have it, you don't obviously have to read this verbatim to your students if you don't want to, but um, we try to make it simple in terms of if you want to actually go into the simulation and kind of show the students these different parts, I don't think you have to think about like you're selling it to students, but at the same time, you are trying to showcase the educational value for them and what you think they'll get out of it um, as a learning resource and why, even though it's only a recommended resource, that you think it's going to really help them develop some of their skills and provide them with a really great practice environment to help them to go from novice to expert. So things like that, um, okay. you know, are always things you can include. And because okay. uh, I think you can showcase and demonstrate some of those things as an expert. Anyways, that's that's one option. Obviously, it's a little bit more involved. The other one is just the whether you try and flip the classroom, like you mentioned, where you have them watch the video and then you talk about the content. That's obviously a good strategy. Okay. And um, that 15 minute video our simulation educator does, essentially it's meant to take their place if an instructor doesn't have the opportunity to uh, you know, do one of those. Um, you know, it's, got, uh, it's got that video link for students that goes through really the forest through the trees and then also does a short demonstration for students, get them some tips and tricks. So um, that can be a yeah, nice cool. little right? That's point. Like I can, I, I, students can access that if I post that link, yes. right? Yeah, and, and I was in the material that Jen sent you. It should be there. It should be that sort of uh, student orientation video link um, that she probably sent you in like a fall of email, most likely. Yeah, the welcome yeah. email should have the same. It's the same link. Okay, so I'm just gonna write that down. Okay, and so I can just. Oh, this is perfect. Okay, it's number two exactly. Um, yeah. Okay, so I can post the video, go over the script, send the email, and have the template accessible to them. So that should be fine. And then that includes a contact person right there. Okay. Yeah, it looks like she also included on the right hand side, if you click on one of the slides, uh, the image actually above, yep, that. That's kind of, I think, one of the best so what um, images for students that really describes some of the unique learning aspects of a technology like ours relative to some of these other things that they're probably more familiar with. Perfect. Um, okay, so, so that's great for the uh, orientation. Um, okay, so that, unless you have anything else to add, I think I'm, that's... Yeah, the last I, other piece... This um, going okay. off. And so I, I haven't had a chance to look at all this stuff, but it's all right no, here. No, no worries. Yeah, she's got a lot of it. She already sent you a lot of that, so that's good. Um, yeah, the only other thing I would really emphasize is uh, is to for them to reach out to Shadow Health if they have any technical questions or even really a first question to us first. And that way, you don't have to play the middle person um, when trying to get them help or play be their IT wizard, which I'm sure is not a, you know. Apparently, I'm not IT job, yeah. We need to open our meeting. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, yeah, so just have them, I, I would just be clear to students, they should reach out to us first. We're open seven days a week. Uh, and even though it says it in the email template for, for whatever reason, uh, I, I think you'll get better compliance if you say it directly to them. Okay. And um, yeah, and you're always going to be, of course, the most authentic voice for students. Like even if they watch the video, which, which I think goes over a pretty compelling overview of why it's an effective learning tool they're going to trust you a lot more than they're going to trust a message from a company. And so, you know, anything you can say that's positive, which it sounds like that's your plan anyways, but um, that I think goes a long way with students. Okay. Okay. That works. Other than that, that's pretty much getting through the first day and they'll have everything in that welcome email document to actually get them into the, uh, into our platform. So you should be good to go on that front. And I think we've made it possible for them to purchase directly from you or from the bookstore. So, um, yeah, let me take a look. Um, let me just confirm that. Let me go into your course. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm also going to double check to make sure that all right, you've got open and due dates and things like that set, which you may not have had a chance just yet. But that's normally something we do together today in the second meeting, but. All right, let me take a look at the setup on these. Yeah, so you have credit card or bookstore, and then you have, yeah, both of them are credit card or bookstore. 
Um, and some students may have to go to the bookstore for financial aid, but uh, inevitably the bookstore marks it up. So it's always going to be cheaper if they buy it through us directly. Right. Um, just, uh, just so students know. Okay. Yeah, the bookstore has a great business model because I don't think they really have to do a whole lot of work. And you know, oh, a lot and of times they mark it up like 30 or $40 above. And it's just like, they're just giving students like bookstore access codes. Like they've got a pretty, uh, they've got a pretty sweet gig. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so I'll include that. So that's good. Um, so I think that works. And so then um, really, I, how do I share my screen again? Oh, let's see. I think you, um, I, I can make you the presenter again. Yeah, we're seeing, we're looking at your screen. And so then the subsequent, um, like, uh, modules, yeah, I guess, the modules are just, right. uh, you know, how to integrate each one. So like a required reading, I'm just gonna write this down for myself, uh, video. Yeah, I think you could put in the shadow, help, um, yeah, you could put in a link right there and then they'll have orientation. Um, right. Um, yeah, and then it's just a question of going through, so there's the concept labs and then I guess, I, I guess I have to go through each one of these to figure out what I'm going to do, or unless you guys have suggestions. So for, for example, yeah, we can help you out with that right now, if you'd like. Yeah. yeah. Like if I do my health history and documentation one, you know, this, the concept lab is the readings and then I'll have some questions on to reflect on that. So whether, whether they can answer it, you know, yeah, the same uh, questions that you guys give, but I'll write them or I'd like, I don't know how that even works. Yeah, so in terms of the follow-up questions, because um, this is, is this one of the strategies where they're going to, students are going to be writing in, on a discussion board, or are these just questions they're sort of answering in general as reflection? Well, they should be something at, like in the discussion board. So some, you know, it might, it might say complete, you know, practice your, um, I don't know, practice your assessment of uh like your respiratory assessment on tina or on whoever on tina jones um and then you know xyz so whatever whatever i want them to do so i the intent is to get them to use this the simulation to to practice it and then to to validate that with me that they've done it by posting something reflective you know what did you hear or what did you observe or what would you have done differently or i don't know some kind of application question yeah. that you can reflect on yeah let me send you a couple of resources i think that can be helpful if you're so you don't have to reinvent Read. the wheel when it comes to yeah. some of the questions um so let me uh single system exams okay so I'm going to send you a couple of resources I think are helpful. Um, let's see, this is Danny's case. Um, we do have like a debrief document um, that has a bunch of questions. Um, so you could always ask, I mean, whether they do it on a partner or they do it on Tina, I think those are relevant in any case. Do you have a debriefing format that you like to use, like the 3Ds model, or um, do you just have, you know, just asking general questions after you do it? Um, yeah, not in this course. I just typically general questions, but I'm not partial to one or the other. Okay, that's good. Um, that's good. That means you have flexibility, which is good. Okay, Esther's case. Let me just include one more. Okay, here is Brian's. And then again, I'll be able to use in a second and go over some of these resources that I think can um, save you some time. All right, let me get the debrief because that I think could also be helpful. Please. We have a, we basically have a template that's a debrief document and has a lot of questions. I think that can serve as the um, basis for a lot of those forum questions. And let me just get those so I can send it to you. All right. There we go. All right. Let me 
I'm just get the last part. Okay, next. Next. All right, if you want to open up your email again, I should have just sent the. the Okay, attached is the teaching debrief template and the patient case overviews. All right. Okay, uh, yeah, if you want to open up your email, it should have just come through. Yeah, maybe refresh again. It'd be nice if it just showed up live, but um, <laughs> yeah, this is it. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to download the document, we can go over that first. And so this is, and again, you could do this asynchronously, of course, but this is just basically, we do the 3Ds model in, in this particular one, but again, like, it, it, you don't have to follow the model as is, but essentially in the 3D model, you diffuse, you discover, and then you deepen, and then you can see the type of questions that get at specific parts, and yeah, depending on the case, right, you can just plug and play whatever the, and so that way you don't have to think of all these questions, we have like a nice bank of questions already right here. Yeah, these are perfect. So, and, and, you know, I can make it a, you know, if you, um, alternative, I could just say alternatively, you can do this with a family member or exactly. And just insert family members, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. And so they're easy, I think, to de-identify if you didn't want to make it contextual to the DCE. Um, and then if, uh, the other resource, um, I think this will give you a nice starting place. And if you want to minimize this, I'll show you the other documents that would help you efficiently if you wanted to ask more tailored questions. Um, if you go like the single system exams, for example, and if you scroll on down, to me, what's helpful here are the, um, so this goes over really the case findings um, and the HPI and things like that. And if you scroll on down. So this one is. Uh, yeah, these are for Tina's single system assignments. And so um, just because it gives you the abnormals at a glance, if you want to plug and play some of those or ask some specific things, you just have them all right here. Um, so if you want to ask a question around one of her abnormals or if you want a, a summary of each assignment, it's got all that right here to help you tailor those form questions. Okay. The other thing I think that can be helpful Mm -hmm. Okay. Is um, if you open up the uh, the ones for the focus exams, um, which are the other uh, attachments in the uh, email, like a Dan uh, Danny's case, that's the cough. I probably should just call it cough. But um, if you scroll on down here, again, it'll also have those abnormal findings that you can see at a glance. And so, if you want to ask some specific about his case. Like, um, tell me some effective questions to ask, like for HPI, like you yeah. just have all that right there just to make it uh, hopefully easy to plug and play with the other document. And the, um, I forget what Jennifer said. So when I, when I fiddled with Tina the first time, this was like a month and a bit ago, um, right. I was trying to, I was practicing doing an HPI with her and I asked, uh, series of questions and then i mean the tina was expecting me to complete like a full health history so to ask me all about um let's say her asthma history and like her full medical history and her full list of medications which i'm not going to require them to do um on tina but can i set like because tina like they provide feedback to the students after correct yeah that, that's correct and so can I set it to say, I only want them to do the HPI part of the health history. I don't want them to do like a medical history and all that stuff. So sure. that when they feedback, it's not like, oh, you only got 5%. Yeah, 
Does that make sense? Yeah. I think you can solve that for two ways. So one, you can actually hide findings so we can make it more targeted around um, only the areas that either are appropriate or that you care about. So we can basically um, turn off the scoring on the other items. So Tina will still answer those questions, but the students won't get counted against it. Um, okay. Again, if this is more for intentional practice for students though, if you're providing them the interview guide, they're gonna know how well they're doing and what they're expected to cover. So I don't necessarily think you need to make that customization unless you think it's inappropriate the amount of depth they're going into. Since okay. they'll know in the assignment how well they're doing on that because they'll have that additional guidance. Right, okay. Um, okay. And because you're not using them as like, if you're using them maybe as more higher stakes assessments, um, that might make sense. But if you're gonna enable the interview guide and the additional guidance, which we haven't talked about that yet, I just wouldn't be as concerned that they're going to get a low score because they'll, they'll they'll see exactly how they're doing in the room. Um, they get immediate feedback even before they submit it, so it shouldn't be a secret. Okay. Perfect. Great. And then uh, the other ones look are, are basically the same. They just are the different cases, and then hopefully it just makes it easy when you reference the other uh, teaching document where you can just fill in the patient and the abnormality if you wanted to target it towards their case or however you wanted to do that. And so I could say, let's say for this, uh, for Brian, one of my questions might be a little bit more concrete with regards to what they heard. And or does the does the program give them the answer after? Yeah, for the objective data collection, it would tell them the abnormalities, but you might ask them follow-up questions, which is, what did you listen for? Or um, to, to figure that out, like if they have to describe it to someone, because um, the software will tell them because they get scored on whether or not they correctly identify what they're hearing. And so they can see what the correct answer is, but you could ask them more in their decision-making process about like, which, like whether it's the location they have to describe or like upload an image so they can show you that, um, or the sound that cued them into the fact it was this abnormal. So you kind of know more of the why versus just them being like, yeah, I can identify the what, but then the question is, do they know why that was the correct answer? Perfect. Okay. That's helpful. And that's where our discussion, I think, can uniquely kind of tap in a little bit more to the why. I always right. think best form questions, if you go back to that list of questions, um, unless you view them more as just like, you know, an honest way to keep them on track. Mm -hmm. I always think the best form questions really explore the gray areas, particularly around patient communication and education empathy. And mm -hmm. so, I think those are, they just make more interesting discussions because there's not a clear right and wrong answer to those. Um, and that's where you want them engaging with classmates. But again, if your goal is just to like, look, I just want something quick, I can ensure that they meet these concrete objectives and it doesn't have to even be a conversation with other students. That would be my only tip when trying to create really effective online forums. Question three. Making the assumption that they're getting the, the skill just by... By doing uh, the simulation and then Again, it's all those gray areas, which there are a lot whenever you're dealing with human beings um, right. that I think can make really rich discussions, whether that's cultural competency things or, again, patient-centered communication. Um, you know, you're going to get divergent answers, and I think that's where some, you know, some learning can happen among the students. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the concept lab. These are, and again, it's just a question of me reviewing them. Those are pretty self-explanatory. Like if I if I tell the students to go to do the respiratory concept lab, it's just a question of them going on, clicking, and it'll be they'll be guided through that. Yeah, the the concept labs are very linear, and so those are pretty guided experiences. Those are some of our highest rate assignments. Um, I would even pull potentially one of them up in class if you have speakers just because they're pretty quick to demonstrate and students love the visuals and the sound. And um, if I was having to sell it to students, that would be one of the first things I would pull up just because the educational value there, th there's no nuance to it. It's just clearly there. And um, even when they interact with the digital patients and go to the conversation, I, I think that's pretty straightforward, but the, uh, the concept labs definitely have an immediate wow factor. Okay. Okay. And that's maybe something I could even do as part of my lecture yeah there it's all online i don't know if i mentioned that we're not doing any oh, okay. yeah um the other new oh go, finish your thought nope that's it 
the other um we just added this a couple days ago um we have a new no cost uh pre and post test if you wanted us to add that to the course um they're just tw they're 22 multiple choice questions it's the same at the beginning and same at the after um if you wanted just another objective measure for the students that actually did shadow health in terms of the growth that they had um you know it can just be one way to measure that um and i think jennifer when i asked that you got do you guys you guys already you do that as part of that at uh, part of the student experience right or is that the the like the satisfaction the student feedback yeah good question that's separate than the student surveys that we embed into the assignment that give you a good idea of the students perceived educational value i think that's a fantastic data point for that because in general we get a high response rate for it but in terms of another objective measure of their learning that's where this new pre and post test is a little bit different just because again it's more like a traditional multiple choice questions and it pretty much explores like patient interviewing physical assessment education and therapeutic communication the same things that they're doing in the assignments it's just another way to try and measure um, those gains because you know it's one and done and the student doesn't get to see the right answers they just get to see categorically how they did on those assignments and so it, again it's totally optional it's just if you wanted to do it we could add it to your course are they pre and post tests for each concept lab or just at the beginning of an end of the course yeah just at the beginning and end of the course huh um and then how would you impl how would you give those mm -hmm. same questions to students who didn't do the simulation like you'd have no oh you could yeah um so for example they actually um it actually lives in our survey gizmo which is the same tool that we use to collect student feedback and so if you wanted to give those to your kind of uh students who didn't do shadow health um we could give you uh the links for those it'd be a little bit harder for you to track who did and didn't do it um but I'm trying to think on the back end how we could do that because normally what happens is if a student does a pre and post test in our platform whenever they click on the post test it grabs all this information so we know which student is filling out what and then when we do like a paired t test at the end you know i can tell you that like student x got this in the beginning and then they got this when they did it again and then you can do that analysis of variance with the paired t test right. um but i'm just trying to think of I, I mean, we could definitely figure something out. I'm just trying to think of whether it's a special link I could give you to your students if you wanted to email the students that didn't purchase Shadow Health. You just would want to be careful because if you were trying to run an experiment and to test that impact, um, you just have to make sure that students that bought Shadow Health didn't then use the basically the links for the students that weren't supposed to buy Shadow Health, if that makes sense. Right. Um, no. But it's definitely, do it's definitely doable. It just would be you know one thing to be careful about. Okay. Um, I would say the students are a little overwhelmed right now with this whole COVID okay. thing, and we just skip that part for this term. And no, then, yeah, no worries. If I'm having sure. trouble following this in future terms, we'll think about doing that. Yeah. Sounds um, good. Yeah. Um, so then, I guess my only other question is like, I'm going to, I've been on vacation for two months, so I, um, like i'll be totally honest i haven't had as much time as i would have liked to go through this so that's my goal in the next two weeks is to really get a good handle on this who do i um who who's my contact and is it can i just send quick emails with quick response like if i have like an urgent issue or something or is it the same as the student email like support yeah, great question. um if you have something that's urgent probably support is your best option since we do meet with faculty during the day but um if it's you know if you have a question like what are the assignment options again or how does that work like i always describe it if it's like a quick question or if it's like an immediate tech issue that you need help with reaching out to our support team is your best bet but if it's a more nuanced question or more in depth then you should reach out to um to to jess and she'll send you a follow-up email today um she's still onboarding and so that's why i'm here um helping her out but um, if you send a quick, uh, you know, if you send that question to Jess, she'll be able to help you out as well. Okay. The other um, aspect is, um, you know, typically we either do one of two things is that right when you anticipate students will complete that first patient case, like the health history, 
um, we either meet in a meeting like this or we can just send you an email that will go out right about that time with a grading tutorial and a link to schedule a meeting if you want to. So um, that, that way, you know, if questions come up during the course, like we already have a, an intentional checkpoint right there. Mm -hmm. um, did you have a preference on how you wanted to do that? Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe on the, um, like the 23rd of September will be, uh, so the first, it'll be the first, um, like I have my orientation with them and then I have another class the next week with uh, no shadow health, like no, uh, no integration of the DCE. And then the third week is when they're gonna use that for the first time. So maybe that's a good week to touch base to make sure that there's no issues and uh, no question. Okay. We can either put a meeting on the books now or we can just shoot you an email that will have some of those just-in-time training resources and a link to schedule a meeting with us sure. if that's yeah, probably great. easier. Yeah. Okay, and then the 23rd of September is when you want us to send that email? Uh, maybe the 20, maybe like the 20th. Sounds good. Yeah, and we can set it up. So like today, we'll set it up so it'll go out on the 20th. And Perfect. so it'll come from us from the past, but uh, that's when it will go out. Okay, and then I'll just send all my emails and resources to Vanessa and then maybe put her in touch with you, Jessica, so that she can um, uh, touch base if she has any questions. Perfect. I will attach both of you in my email, um, one for later and the one for today as well, just so she's um, kept up as well. Perfect. That's great. And that was super helpful. Now that my mind is in it, I feel like I'm yeah. a lot more prepared. I was a little overwhelmed before. <laughs> No, no worries. That's why that's why we exist. So um, try and make it as straightforward as possible. Do you know other parts just to make sure you're good to go is to set those open due dates? Um, yes. Just so students can get and do the assignments when you want them to. And then uh, did you enjoy, uh, and she wrote some notes about this assignment settings. Did you feel pretty good about which assignment options you want and all? It looks like you, you guys went in and already did some of that. So. Yeah, I think so. I have to go through. I think it's okay. going to be a week by week thing for me because it's going to be like, how do I best integrate, you know, based on the needs of the students. Um, and I and I think I'll only open them on the week, but then I'll leave them open for students so that they continue to practice and, and yeah, things. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, from what you mentioned about your students. So let's see, it looks like you No, that's fine. That's so it looks like you have the most guided interview guide, like the full interview guide on the first assignment, but then you take it away on the remaining assignments. Does that sound right? Say that again? Yeah, so uh, in terms of how it's set up, um, you have the most guide, or the full interview guide. Does it, the interview guide, does that make sense, or is that something I should go over? Just yes, to make no, sure? no, no, I do remember. And we set it so that at the beginning, they have a lot of help, and then afterward, okay. less. Is that, that's what you Perfect. mean, right? Yeah, that's how you guys have it set up. So yeah, really the last remaining piece is um, to just uh, that Jennifer sent you that welcome email and then just make sure that you add the PIN number. Um, it's going to be different for section one and section two because they're different courses in our platform, but you should have that on your dashboard. Okay. And that's how students get in. So for example, if I was a student and I was following your wonderful directions, there would be that I'd have to give them the pin. Yeah, and basically that pin number will attach them to section one of this course in Niagara College. That's how our system knows where to add them to. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, other than setting the dates, um, the other resource you might want to call out for students in that orientation is the student handbook. Oops. Are you already pretty familiar with this or is this something you'd like me to go over? Uh, no, I can take a look at it. So um, what's nice about this is this is especially, I think, handy for students that like to print things out and just have that tactile resource right there as they go through the assignments. Okay. But it's got like an overview in terms of what they're expected to cover. It's even got a video in each one of them um, that it's like a getting started video where it's like the first couple minutes of like a walkthrough by our simulation educator. And then she kind of like hands the reins, you know, like, okay, well, now that we've gotten started, you know, like, now you try kind of deal. And so if students need additional more guidance, I think that's also another nice resource that can help them through. Okay, I'm going to add that to my required reading. So. 
Yeah, and then again, it's just, uh, and then it's, you know, it's just one more resource for them to help them out. Okay. Um, the la oh, go, go ahead, sorry. Nope, I just said that's great. Yeah, I'm all, uh, I'm all The set. last checkpoint that we have is, we usually have one toward the end in case you want to look at any of the student feedback. So again, similar strategy, we could set up an email to go out toward the end of the course, and then um, it'll have like a survey, which is uh, always really important um, if you fill out since it goes right to our executive team. You know, if you have requests for new features or new patients or things like that. Um, and uh, and then, you know, if you want to schedule a meeting to go over the student feedback, there'll be a link as well to do that there. Um, when's a good time for that uh, email kind of checkpoint to go out? Uh, the end of the course will be... Um, December, probably the first week of December. Yeah, you usually recommend like a week or two before since we should have enough student feedback by then to meaningfully make heads or tails. And then uh, usually the end of the semester gets crazy busy for y'all. Great. So, um, the last, you know. last class is on December 16th. Um, and so, yeah, anytime, like, yeah, beginning of December, late November. My our last okay. uh, use of the sim is on December second. So okay, let's uh, we can send the email out. Um, let's see, I'm gonna get the calendar. Uh, da, 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 da. I can't remember when. Uh, let's see, Thanksgiving is this year, but um, we could send it on like the uh, yeah November thirtieth. Do you think that's a good time for the email to go out? That's perfect. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Anything else we can help you out with today? No, that's awesome. I really, really appreciate it. And that was very helpful. Great. Am I, uh, Jess, am I forgetting anything that you can think of? No, nope, I think you've covered everything. Excellent. Well, uh, uh, don't be shy to reach out to us. Um, we're here to help. And um, yeah, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too, Chris. Thanks, Jessica. Pleasure. All right. Bye. Bye.